All right, so after the Civil War is over, we have the period that is called Reconstruction. Uh, and uh, Reconstruction is really misunderstood in a lot of ways, um, what it was all about. Um, but let's let's just kind of get a basic idea of Reconstruction today. So Reconstruction was the time period just after the Civil War when the seceded states were rebuilt and gradually brought back into the Union. Uh, constitutions had to be rewritten and laws were changed in the South. The amount of time this took varied from state to state, but it generally lasted about five years. And so you can see kind of Reconstruction, you know, we've, the, the country has been ripped apart. Reconstruction is a period where we're trying to bring it back together. But the questions are, well, what do we do about the leaders of the Confederacy? What do we do about the soldiers? People that all these people fought against the United States. And now and and now are they going to be allowed to just take back be back in charge? Well, you know, the people that were leaders during the the rebellion, are they going to be if they were governor of during of a state, will they, they do they remain governor if they had a role in the Confederate States of America uh, and what roles are we going to allow? Um, is Jefferson Davis uh, simply allowed to return uh, to his state and be unpunished? Is he going to, what's going to happen to these people that rebelled against the United States of America? Uh, and, and who's going to vote? Who's going to be allowed to vote? Uh, what, what, what does it take? What does a state have to do before they can be allowed fully back into the United States? In other words, will, how many people have to declare loyalty to the United States um, in order to have members of the House of Representatives in the United States House of Representatives, to have senators in the United States Senate, to uh, you know have electors and take part in the election of the president anymore. So what did all those questions have to be answered and just figured out? Um, and not everybody has the same plan. Lincoln had a plan. Andrew Johnson has a plan. The United States Congress has a plan and different plans within that Congress. There's um, what's going to happen. So there's a lot of destruction throughout the South, and not only d does this destruction have to, the, 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 these buildings have to be rebuilt, but even more difficult, how are these institutions going to be rebuilt within the South in a way that guarantees the rights that are supposed to be guaranteed for those freed men that have been enslaved throughout U.S. history prior to this time? So one of the, the big events of that we celebrate now is called Juneteenth. It's uh, June 19th, 1865. Uh, U.S. General Gordon Granger rode into Texas and issued the proclamation that all slaves are free. So we talked about Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, but just because Lincoln issues this proclamation, the Southern states aren't going to suddenly, especially during the war, they're not going to be like, oh, okay, sure, we're, we'll do what uh, President Lincoln says, even though we think we're not even a part of his country anymore. Well, of course not. Um, this war is being fought to preserve slavery. They're not going to suddenly, well, just with the stroke of a pen of Abraham Lincoln's pen, say, sure, they're, you're all free. Um, so what is happening throughout the South during the war is everywhere the Union Army goes, Slaves, uh, enslaved people are trying to escape uh, and do escape and, and run towards the Union Army. And once they're on the other side of the Union Army, in many cases, they are safe. Now, early in the war, in some cases, they were actually returned. Um, but as the war progresses, that practice begins to, to slow um, and stop. But so in June of 1865, uh, G General Gordon Granger reads proclamation number three, um, order number three, general order number three, I'm sorry. And it says, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection heretofore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired labor. The freedmen are advised to remain quietly at their present homes and work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and that they will not be supported in idleness either there or elsewhere. And so uh, the, what's going to happen? That's this period of Reconstruction. Notice even in that paragraph how, how difficult uh, you know, kind of some, they're like, there's good news, but there's also like, wait, you expect me to stay here and work now 
for this same person that thought he owned me and I'm just going to collect wages. Uh, it, it does. It happens in some cases, um, but it does not happen in many, many cases because nobody wants to do that. Uh, and, and so this is period of of what are we going to do? Uh, and Juneteenth is a is a is a celebration that happens every year in Texas, but you'll see, and it has become a bigger celebration even all around uh, the country as we honor um, this day uh, where freedom was declared in Texas. Uh, another part of the, this period of Reconstruction is the Freedmen's Bureau. The Freedmen's Bureau was a government agency that was created to help former slaves uh, throughout the South. The Bureau's purpose was to provide aid to thousands of former slaves left, left homeless by the war and the abolition of slavery. The Bureau monitored the lives of newly freed slaves, helping them find jobs and getting food or clothing to those in need, as well as providing them an education and defending their legal rights. Uh, and so this is just a, 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 an image showing freedmen showing up to the Freedmen's Bureau looking for help uh, to, to kind of one of the big things, one of the main things that happens during this time is people are trying to find family members because the, one of the, the, the worst parts of slavery was the dividing up of families, the, the, slay, the selling of an enslaved person away from one plantation to another uh, and, and dividing up of families. And so immediately upon gaining freedom, people move around in search of their family members that have been lost uh, and uh, sold away. And so the Freedmen Bureau tried to help with that, that reunification of families as well. So uh, during this time, uh, because of the assassination of President Lincoln, uh, Andrew Johnson, uh, who was his vice president, becomes the president. Johnson was from Tennessee and showed a lot of sympathy to the South um, and modeled his Reconstruction plan after Lincoln's own plans to bring the Union back together, heal the nation, not punish the South, and let's move on without slavery. Um, he was, but he was very sympathetic to the South uh, and uh, is not willing to really do some of the things that are going to be necessary to um, bring about um, real change. See, this, the, the Reconstruction has a real problem. Um, the Union has won, but they have won the, on the field. They have not convinced the people of the South that uh, these enslaved people are equal and should be treated so, and that they should have rights. And so there, this process of of bringing the the southern states back into the union and guaranteeing the rights of these formerly enslaved people, the freedmen, their rights is going to be difficult. Um, and Johnson was not really up to the task, um, although it was a very high task. It was a very difficult task. There, it's not clear that anybody would have been up to the task. Um, he was the first president to be impeached. He was not removed from office. Um, it was a political um, impeachment, certainly. Uh, he, it is, he, while he failed in many ways, uh, it, it's, it seems fairly certain, clear that uh, his uh, impeachment was, was more political and not um, really based on any true um, wrongdoing specifically that would, would warrant uh, impeachment which is ultimately why he was not impeached or removed from office. Um, during this period of Reconstruction uh, as well, we have the, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. And you can, uh, the 13th Amendment, these are called the Civil War Amendments or the Reconstruction Amendments. Um, the 13th Amendment officially abolishes slavery. Um, so the, the Emancipation Proclamation is a wartime act. It's only basically... Um, during a, a war, it's enforced during the war. And so with the, the passing of the 13th Amendment, it is abolished everywhere in the border states as well. Um, the 14th Amendment guaranteed citizenship to former slaves. And this key phrase here, guarantees equal protection under the law. The 14th Amendment is an especially important amendment even still today. 
um, many uh, Supreme Court cases uh, hinge on their reading and understanding of the 14th Amendment still today. And then the 15th Amendment uh, gave African American men the right to vote. And so one way to remember this, the 13th, 14th Amendment is this. So you've got 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment. If you can remember free citizens vote. 13, 14, 15, free citizens vote, that you can remember 13th Amendment, freed slaves. 14th Amendment, guaranteed the rights of citizens, guaranteed these former slaves the rights of citizens. And that key phrase, equal protection of the laws. So uh, a, a freedman is supposed to have equal protection as a white man, even in a Southern state like Texas or Alabama or Mississippi. Now it didn't happen that's what this period of Reconstruction is trying to work through, um, ultimately not very successfully, but that's what, these, that's what these amendments are supposed to be guaranteeing. And the 15th Amendment guarantees uh, the freed men, men specifically, the right to vote. Women still do not have the right to vote. Um, certainly, uh, the freed women don't have the right to vote either. Okay, so these are some of the political accomplishments during Reconstruction. The actual working of it out and making it happen don't ju don't happen really yet in the southern states, uh, really for a long time, sadly. And that's what brings us really. Uh, so the the failures of Reconstruction is what leads to the next hundred years of of oppression uh, and Jim Crow laws and uh, segregation, but then ultimately you know, the, the work of Reconstruction uh, begins again with uh, the Civil Rights Movement of the 50s and 60s. And so we really see Reconstruction ending in the 1870s, but we see the work of Reconstruction not ending um, for over 100 years later. And, and you could argue in some cases, some of that work is still to be done.